Hi, my name is Aaron Holstein, and I'm an Ableton certified trainer based in Colorado, USA. In this video, I'm going to use numerous Ableton devices inside of an instrument rack to create a synth bass in Ableton 12. I've named this instrument rack Saw Bass Synth, and it is a two layer synth patch utilizing Ableton Operator and Drift. I've mapped some important parameters from the synths and some from the effects that I'm using to the macros on the surface of the instrument rack so that I could close up the view of all the details so I can just control the sound using the macros. So the first two controls are operator volume and drift volume. Let's open up the instrument rack and take a look at what's going on under the hood. One thing to understand is that racks in Ableton Live can be nested inside of other racks, and those racks can be nested inside of other racks. So you can create some very sophisticated controls with the macros from the top level rack that will control elements down within one of the sub racks and all of this can be made into a nice simple interface by closing up the view. In the main instrument rack section here we've got a layer of operator and a layer with drift. In this case operator is providing the sub tone. It's a sine wave with very little uh, effects or movement. It's meant to sound very clean, and that's one of my favorite things about Operator is that it has really clean sine waves that can be used, in this case, to create a great sub tone, which is the low end for our synth patch here. If we take a look at the frequency display in this EQ8 that I've placed after operator, we can see that it's providing a pure tone, very focused to one low frequency. The drift synth is providing the mid-range and higher frequency saw wave tone to the sound. And I have it default set for one saw oscillator to play, and I have mapped a macro to the second saw oscillator so you can add even more character to the drift layer. The filter is set to cut out the low frequencies using a high pass filter that is built in to drift so that they don't conflict with the low frequencies we're getting from operator. An operator's job is for this synth to provide clean sub frequencies. Additionally, I have an EQ8 after drift, which is removing more low end to make sure that there's plenty of room for the operator sub frequencies. So this way we've got room for the frequencies created by each synth to work together. Directly following the instrument rack, which contains operator and drift, I've placed Ableton Live 12's envelope follower device. The envelope follower takes the incoming audio signal from these two layers mixed together and creates a shape based on the gain of that signal and can be applied to control any knobs that we want. In this case, I have it controlling the filter frequency cutoff of an auto filter here in low pass mode, cutting some highs, and it adds some movement to the sound. You can see the louder the audio that comes into Envelope Follower, the higher the frequency cutoff becomes. And 
it gives it some nice shape and that vowel opening sound. At the beginning of each note, I've mapped the resonance knob to the top level macro area so that that can be controlled. From the main macro section. One of my favorite new features of Live 12 is the Roar device. It's an incredibly sophisticated distortion effect which can be used in all kinds of interesting ways. The way I have it set up today is a two-stage serial routing. So each stage feeds the next. And we have um, in stage one, a tube shaper and in stage two, a soft shaper. So I'm adding tube saturation in stage one and soft clipping in stage two. You can hear when I disable roar. And then re-enable it, how much character and energy and volume boost we get from adding those two stages of saturation to the sound. I have another auto filter that is set notch mode with a very narrow cut and the LFO enabled so that it moves around that frequency where the that's being cut automatically. This creates a little bit of movement in the sound. I like this to be very subtle stage, but it helps combine the things that are going on here. I also have added the cabinet device set to 4x10 bass speaker. And it's currently turned all the way down, but its dry wet control is mapped to the macro controls so that we can add the cabinet effect if we want. Then I'm using two glue compressors to help heat up the volume of the sound and compress and contain the peaks so that it's controlled and we're gonna get narrower dynamic range out of the synth. And I've enabled the soft clippers so that we won't accidentally go over zero or into the red with this sound. So these compressors and two of them in a row gives us a nice subtle stages of compression so that we can bring out the best of this sound and contain its volume. Another important feature of this preset utilizes Ableton's new expression control device. In this case, I'm controlling the low pass frequency of the drift synth with pitch bend. And what I've done is I have switched the minimum and maximum amounts so that in this case, when you pitch bend upwards, the frequency cutoff will go down. And when you pitch bend downwards, the frequency cutoff will open up. So that allows the... When you go into the lows, it opens up and it creates a brighter saw wave tone on top, which is kind of the opposite direction than is expected. And as you pitch bend up, it closes the filter on the, the drift synth so that it makes a darker sound as you're raising the pitch. Now that we've taken a look at all the devices that we're combining within this instrument rack, we can come up to the surface macro controls to make some changes and create some variations. When we find variations that we like, we can set a new macro variation where it saves the knob settings so that we can instantly recall that sound. So this way we can make a bunch of presets using this instrument rack setup. So uh, 
As we checked out earlier, the operator volume is how much low end sub we're putting into this sound. Drift volume is the mid range and high uh, frequency uh, saw wave that's being added to the sine wave. Here is that bass cabinet. If we want to add a little of that, I've got this macro set to its dry wet amount. Which has a cool, uh, interesting effect. Heat is set to the makeup gain of the first of two glue compressors, which are at the end of the instrument rack chain. That will bring up the internal volume of the sound before it hits that second compressor, which will cap the maximum volume using soft clipping and threshold. So in an extreme setting, we'll get distortion out of that, but it won't peak over zero because we have a second compressor stage. So heat is just uh, one of the controls we can add. Filter res is on the auto filter device that's attached to the envelope follower. You can hear that filter reson resonance. The saw two amount is that second saw wave in drift. that adds even more mid-range and high-frequency saw wave goodness to the sound. Envelope rise controls the speed at which the filter that's connected to this envelope follower opens up. So you get that vowel sound when you add more envelope rise. And it's just more open right away when we turn it all the way down to 0%. So some, some amount will give us a little vowel to, at the start of the sound. So if we like this preset that we've just created, we say new, and we can name that uh, saw base three. And then it's easy to switch between some settings that we like, um, and we can collect a few variations of this. They're subtle, but they're different. One thing I love about the new Drift synth is the way that it, it handles voice architecture. And in mono mode, which is what we're using so that we're getting a monophonic sound, only one note at a time, it utilizes four voices stacked to create the sound. And the drift amount is the difference between those voices and how much they change each time you play them. It gives it some imperfection, which I love. It's very analog sounding to my ear. And in mono mode, you can add thickness. So listen to this. I'd like to use that thickness texture as one of the controls in the main macro section of the instrument rack. So first we need to map it to the inner instrument rack, which contains operator and drift. It shows up here in position four. From there, we can map it up to macro eight on 
the topmost level here. So now we have a control. For how thick the saw wave layer is going to sound. So I'm going to save a new macro variation. called thicker and we can switch through the macro variations to listen back to the presets that we're creating here So once I've created my instrument rack and some variations for presets, I can just go to the save icon in the upper right hand corner of the interface and save it to my library. So now it can be dragged in on any new channel and played and adjusted. right from the macro section here. So as you can see, this is a really powerful way of creating instruments that you can use and reuse in your productions with lots of variables that you can control from the macros and save variations as presets all within the instrument rack architecture.